In this video, I want to carry forward with the walkthrough start to finish video theme that I've, I've done lately. I've got a 10 minute, a 15 minute. Now I'm working up. This one is going to be a 20 minute walkthrough. So let's go ahead and dive into the painting. So on screen, this is what I'm working on today. It's a, a figure study of a woman sitting by the water, writing in a book, and it features a strong sunlight interaction. So I've got the underpainting outline going right now. So with this, I actually did something a little different. I used a filbert brush instead of a flat brush. I wanted to try something that maybe would have a little more precise control over angles and wideness of some of the features. You can see what I'm using here is the usual thinned down paint. It's thinned down with lin linseed oil. For the rest of the painting, I, I'll use just paint right out of the tube, but the underpainting is usually a thin down for me anyways. So I used the filbert brush here, which was a little different. I'm not sure. I, th I like how the painting turned out overall. I'm not sure if I, if I really got the benefit of extra control or not. I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about that. So um, I'll probably try a couple more and see how they go. So when I'm doing an underpainting outline, uh, I try to think of it kind of as like a skeletal, almost a mannequin type situation. I'll do the the rough outline of the head shape uh, without worrying about any feature details. And then I'll, I'll position the angle and length of the neck and then connect it to the shoulders and clavicle. Try to get the angle and where it is in the 3D plane based on that. Um, and then from the shoulders and clavicle, I'll connect the arms and I'll try to judge each piece relative to the piece prior to it. So the length of the arms relative to the shoulder width and to where the head is. And then I'll also, and then I'll also try to get the angle and plane of the hips and then connect to the legs to those as well. Uh, I'm actually not sure if I did that on this one or not, but usually I do. So I'll kind of connect them in that way and, and judge lengths and position and proportion. These figure studies have actually taken a lot of practice for me. They've been a point of emphasis this year. Uh, I've wanted to get better at them because a long-term goal of mine is to eventually try painting from life, maybe like a classroom setting where they have uh, figure study models and people can come in and paint them. I think that would be fun. Uh, so I've been trying to work towards that. I don't think you, really a caliper or trying to use grids or anything in a situation like that would work. So. Uh, I wanted to get better at this aspect of it. So in the point of the video that we're, that we're at right now, this is what I would kind of refer to as like the rough, ugly part. I saw some posts from some other artists I follow on Instagram lately talking about that rough stage of their paintings. I have to agree that a lot of, a lot of pieces that I do do have those rough, ugly stages. And I think that this one, the rough, ugly stage is the one that's on screen right now. And this is where I was kind of struggling with some of my goals for this. I think I mentioned earlier, like kind of at the start of this video, that I wanted a scene with a woman with sunlight coming in strong on one side of her. And so part of that is like the overall goal was I wanted some warm, bright colors. And then I also wanted some cool, dark colors, kind of playing around with light. I think that kind of establishing goals like this and pushing towards them or trying to mess around with them is a good way to get practice with something that you feel like you're weaker at. So in this case, that's what I was going for. But this stage of the painting is one where I feel like I was really struggling with some of the, some of those aspects. The cooler, darker parts, to no surprise to me based on my, my historical painting, cooler, darker colors are no problem. I'm able to get those. The, the warmer, bright colors I certainly struggled with. I, I think I was able to get, at this stage, the face to have these warmer colors. And I think I got the feature positions right as well, but trying to make them look bright is a trick that is eluding me a lot. And it wasn't just on this painting, it's on a lot of paintings that I've done where if I want something really bright, I'm not always sure how to go about that. And I think that this is probably an area where I need to study up and probably watch some, some videos and do some research and see how other artists 
do really bright light. The best I can figure so far about how that's supposed to work or how it could work is really leaving those bright areas that you're planning to make bright, just leaving them unpainted or at least leaving them closer to white. That way you don't get muddy with them. Because I think that's one of the things that I struggled with here is some of the areas that I wanted to make bright already had paint on them. So I couldn't I couldn't impact them in quite the way that I hoped. I think I got close, but not exactly. That's kind of a work in progress. Uh, I think a worthy goal for 2024 is to kind of work on that a little bit. At this point in the painting, I'm, I'm really trying to get, I've got the darkness of the clothes down and I've kind of started to work in some of the additional brightness. Again, the, the goal is for there to be sunlight coming in from the other side, from behind where the subject is. And so I wanted it to kind of reflect through the hat. And I, I leaned heavily on cadmium yellow and titanium white to try to make that happen. I think that kind of worked mostly. Again, it's not as bright as I wanted it to be, but with a lot of this stuff, I also wonder if I'm too far into my own head with some of my kind of internal critiques. Like maybe to a viewer, this actually looks bright enough, but I feel like there is br a brighter place I could have gotten this to. So at least I did get a lot of practice here playing around with orange, which kind of surprisingly I don't get to a lot. I lean heavily on yellow ochre and yellow ochre doesn't really make a bright orange. It makes kind of a brown orange. Getting to play around with cadmium red and cadmium yellow was kind of fun in this painting. I got to uh, work with some colors that I don't always get to work with. So I mentioned some of the challenges with warm and cool. I should talk a little about the success though, at least, or at least in my view, what I feel like is a success here. Um, I really like the book. I was surprised that that actually kind of worked. I used some blues to try to bring out the shadow tones in the book to make it kind of similar to the, to the backside of the woman's left arm. And I think that effort actually worked. So I was pretty pleased with that. And I was able to keep the cools and the warms somewhat separate, which helps with the kind of illusion of a sun back there. I wasn't sure if how that interplay was going to look once it was on paper, but it, I think it did actually work. So that's something to be happy about. Another issue or concern that I kind of had my eye out for that never materialized in this painting is, so you can see now I'm, I'm starting to work on the background, try to fill in some of the kind of landscape areas, some of the water, some of the stuff that's far in the background, as well as the sky. I was worried about the blue, which is an ultramarine blue, how that would interact with the cadmium yellow. Is it gonna turn green is what I was worried about. I, I'm, I was worried about that just because I don't have as much experience with those colors interacting. And I know that uh, in some of the episodes of The Joy of Painting, some of Bob Ross's painting shows, I know he has mentioned that you have to be worried about that, that you don't want a green sky. Uh, that's something that he mentions pretty often. In this case, to my surprise, I did not end up with any green in my sky, uh, which is honestly a little shocking. I, I thought for sure I was going to end up running into that because I tried to keep the blues on the periphery, the yellows in the middle, and try to keep them a little separate. But when I started blending in white, I definitely mixed them up. So I don't know what to attribute that to because again, I have less experience with cadmium yellow than I do with yellow ochre. So what I have read though about ultramarine blue is that it mixes very well with browns, whereas phthalo blue mixes really well with yellows. Now, I just read that somewhere. I don't have enough experience to know how true that nugget is, but at least based on this painting, ultramarine blue played relatively well with cadmium yellow. So that, that is a relief. I think in a future painting, I need to experiment a little bit more with ultramarine blue versus phthalo blue and see how they both play with other colors. 
I think that would be beneficial to kind of experiment with that. Uh, maybe that can be my next one or, or one in the near future. I think that would be kind of fun. One issue that I think did materialize that I wasn't expecting is I didn't really, I don't think I did the sunlight reflection right. I wanted to put it in the water, like kind of reflect where the sun might be bouncing off the water for, in between the mountains or uh, something like that. But I didn't really, my spacing isn't right because I, I feel like the way I did the yellow, the yellow is more, the sun is probably more behind her hat, which I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that aligns with where I put the, the sun reflection in the water. So I don't know if this, this painting completely makes logical sense or makes natural sense or something. I, I don't know what the right terminology is there, but maybe no one would notice that if I never brought it up, but uh, I thought that was not quite a miss, but sort of weird. So, but it happens. So now at this stage in the painting, you can see I'm really trying to lay in some detail into the background. I've got the subject almost complete, but I wanted to have kind of some, I wanted to frame with maybe some leaves hanging down, but I didn't want just green leaves. I wanted some additional colors in there. So since it's, I guess it's winter now, but it's kind of like that kind of year, time of year, let's get some, some leaves of multicolor. I thought that might be kind of fun. I also feel like the rocks in the water probably needed a little more work. I, I wasn't sure how to do the reflection because every time I tried to lay in any additional darkness, it just looked like part of the rock. I think reflecting things in water is probably another thing that needs some practice. So there's, there's always room for, for growth and improvement, I think. Now, I'm not sure if we're to that point in this video yet, but there certainly was a point where I started having some light issues, some lighting issues. And I don't mean light that I'm trying to depict in the painting. I mean, the actual light around me was kind of an issue. So this is um, has been a struggle ever since I started trying to film myself painting starting a year ago. I've got my, my easel facing towards a window with bright sunlight that comes in, but sometimes I find that sunlight, when it starts to become more direct, reflects off of my paint. So it kind of hinders the view of what I'm doing a little bit. And I feel like in this in this video, in this painting, you can kind of see that. I also have a soft box, a light soft box, that's positioned kind of at an angle over my head that provides almost overhead angled lighting for this for this painting surface, which that does help a lot, but there are times where I feel like even that is maybe a little too reflective. So this is kind of a work in progress as far as trying to light my painting surfaces. I don't know what best practice is because I'm not a photographer, but I have seen some other artists that I follow like on Instagram and YouTube that have shown their lighting solutions before. And one of them actually has an interesting setup where she has set up lights behind her canvas, like a whole system of lights all the way behind the canvas and below the canvas that just surround the whole thing. She has a huge canvas, but surrounds the whole thing and provides a really nice lighting solution that is not directly on the portrait. And her photos and videos look really nice. So I, I wonder if she's maybe got the, the magic solution. As you can see from this video, I'm actually in the playroom in my house. So I've got, you know, toys and seating and stuff behind the easel. So I'm not sure that setting up elaborate backlights behind my easel is actually a, a viable solution for me right now, but it's a good idea. And it, maybe someday that's something I could explore in the future. Irrespective of lighting, I think that this painting turned out pretty well. 
I believe it's probably going to be my last painting of 2023. I'm not sure when exactly I'll post this video, but as it stands right now, New Year's Eve is tomorrow, so we'll see if it actually is my last one. But if it is my last one, I think it was a great way to end the year. I accomplished most of the goals that I wanted to with this one. I've got a pretty decent kind of kind of sun setting light situation happening here, which is kind of nice. I, I, my goal was to show some brighter warm colors on one side and some darker cool colors. I think I accomplished that here. And it's kind of a pretty nature scene. I think the figure study overall, the proportions look fine. It's pretty decent. So I, I'm, I'm happy with the way this one turned out. And I feel like I can't always say that immediately after. Usually I have a lot of stuff to pick through on, on paintings, but overall, I think I accomplished what I wanted to here. So uh, kind of fun. Since this is probably the last painting of 2023 for me, and I mentioned previously in this video, some of the goals that I have for improving in the next year might be a good opportunity to talk about what those goals are for 2024. So one of the big things is more arts and crafts fairs. I did an art fair, sort of craft fair for the first time this year, and I ended up actually getting some commissions out of it, which was definitely a surprise. I had planned to do a demo, a painting demo during this, this craft fair, because I figured I would have some downtime, but what ended up happening is people, a lot of people came by and wanted to talk about artwork and painting and all that stuff. So I ended up not having any free time. It was mostly just talking to people. So there's lots of organization that goes along with those art fairs though. So I know I do have a lot of work to do next year if I want to, if I want to participate in that again. A lot of it has to do with the setting up the booth and mainly just getting displays ready. One of the things that I was missing were, were the grid walls that I could hang my art and the paintings and, and prints from. And I also needed a lot more prints to sell. I only had a few, so I need to work on kind of stocking up with that stuff. Another goal I think I mentioned earlier in this video is, uh, is figure studies. Will I finally paint from life? That I don't really know, but uh, maybe I'll seek opportunities for this or, or perhaps I'll stumble into it, kind of like I did with the art fair this year, just something that I happened to come across. So another goal is I want to do some more themed paintings, kind of some fantasy RPG kind of swords and magic type stuff. I've always liked that, that sort of thing thematically, and so I think that would be fun to incorporate in more paintings. I actually had a, an Instagram poll recently where I asked like what, what people would want to see more of. The vast majority of people wanted to see more figure studies, so... That was nice that that aligned with what I wanted to do anyways. But I even had a message that was separate from the poll where someone was saying they wanted to see more fantasy themed type stuff like the swords and magic that I mentioned. So that's, that's kind of nice too, because that was already something that was on my mind. So that's even better to hear from someone else that would like to see that. So otherwise, the goal is simply just to get more practice. Um, that was my goal this year is to just put in the time and put in the work to get better, putting in the time to improve. I did 134 paintings in 2023, and I feel like I saw really significant improvement through all that. And if I can put in similar work in 2024, I don't know if I can do quite that many, but if I could get close, that would really help. So that's all I have for this 20 minute start to finish walkthrough. I hope these do continue to be helpful. I'm certainly open to any comments or feedback that anyone might have about these. If, if longer walkthroughs are better, or if you like shorter walkthroughs, or if you just prefer the topical kind of bite-sized individual videos that I do. I like making them all, so I'm open to many things. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this painting finish out on screen. There's still a little bit of video left. I appreciate you watching this one and I hope to see you for the next one.